Oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. I've got the funniest feeling. Nothing is going my way. Hello, boys and girls. It's the weekend. It must be coffee with scruff. Matron, take them away. And a warm welcome to one and all. If this is your first time here, I'm the big fella Scruff, with probably an unhealthy obsession with coffee, because we all know Scruffy likes a coffee, and he also likes the charts, and that's what these videos are all about. But today is slightly different, because on a weekend I like to kind of answer some queries that's come up, tell you a little bit about my thoughts, and just kind of go with the flow. But I want to ask a question to you lot, and I'd be interested in the comments as well. Do you actually let your money work for you? Or is the money working you? Who'd be stupid enough to do that? Justify, stupid. It's an interesting kind of question to ask. And I'll tell you for why. In, in the sort of Discord that I run, and if I flick this over, I'll, I'll kind of quickly show you. Um, what you got to remember is, guys, I do everything um, live. I don't edit anything. I just switch the camera on the way we go, which is why my trading videos are quite different to most people's, because you see it in the moment. But that's exactly what this is. Now, again, we're asking, and I've got to kind of figure out where this uh, might have been in rogue chat, actually. Uh, da -da -da -da. Yeah, there we go. So it's Anthony. Little salute to you, my friend. Um, was asking about Darwin and a little bit deeper into it. Now, Darwin X are very different to the prop industry. And I'm going to kind of touch on that because I'm going to explore it over the next sort of month or so because I don't understand it fully myself. Um, I know the company. Uh, I met them in London, I had a good chat with them, one thing or that. And my take to answer that before I go on to working money for you is that's exactly what they're up to. You see, in the prop industry, I don't like the prop industry, let's be honest. Uh, a lot of people know that. And I've only got time for one company, which is the 5 percenters, Because I don't look at them as a prop company, I look at them as a trading company because they want good traders to succeed. That's kind of why that goalposts are slightly different to say FTMO and all of these others. I've got no time for FTMO or all the wannabes that are around. Promotes gambling. So that is the money working you, not you working the money. Now, in the prop industry, because of milestones and all of that, that's kind of the route that that takes. Now, Darwin, they do it a different way. They have like two two sides to the coin, if you like. If you're wanting to put your own money in and then grow it normally, like you would in any other broker, you know, sort of Black Bull or whatever, that's fine. They'll let you do that. After you've allocated so much information, in other words, the senior statistics, all of that sort of thing, they will give you a seed capital that can then be put out to ex investors and you just trade your own joyful the way you're doing anyway but in the background this seed capital can sort of grow and you'll get paid a management fee for that that growth so there's that side of it now if you don't want to risk your money you can pay a subscription fee with it and the only thing you'll ever lose is that subscription and it does exactly the same job so again you're kind of making your money work for you so if you've only got a thousand pounds to put into an account you could effectively use that thousand pound as your subscription each month, probably use less than half of it, be allocated funds, and then be paid quite well. Same principle with the prop industry where you pay your one initial fee, 
and then you look to stay in the game as long as you can. There is differences between the two. In the prop industry, it's milestones, they change the goalposts quite a lot, and there's always the new shiny toy. When you've got your own broker, and that's where I'm going to go with this, I'm going to show you, show you mine, you have the ability to do what you like. There are no goalposts. If it takes you three years to make 7%, it takes you three years to make 7%. In the prop industry, they want it done in a month. So it's pushing you down a gambling road. And that's kind of where this chat's come from. So let me kind of delve into where I'm going with this after that little bit of blurb. I'm always an advocate of your own funds. I'm also an advocate of compounding and building up small accounts because small accounts can become big accounts. And then as you get better, there's no reason why you couldn't go to a prop fund because you've already learned your craft. You should never go into any other proprietary company unless you know what you're doing. If you don't know what you're doing, then you're better off staying on a paper trading account till you understand what it's up to. Then when you feel confident, you can then put your little bit of money into the market. Now, if you haven't got a lot of money, using one of these companies works for you. Again, you're putting your money to work for you. But if you're putting money into the market, thinking you're gonna have a massive return very quickly, then the money is working you and it'll force you to gamble and you will lose. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of finish this up by showing you um, my Vanguard, because that is money being worked and it ain't working me because once it's in there, forget about it. So let me kind of flick this over a second. And I really want this to open up a dialogue and it'd be great if you comment on it and then I'll do follow up videos based on the comments. Now, as many of you know, I, I like to build up small accounts and then show you what you can do with them. Now I've done it with prop. I've still got the share account running. We call it the share account, even though I'm trading Forex in it now. Um, which started with £118 and it's evolved into a decent account that I can trade every day. Now, I was also asked by the group, salute to you, Steph and Danny and whatever, to do like a, a small breakout challenge where you trade once a day. Well, I'm doing it in this account, so you can have a look here. This is Black Bull. There'll be a link for this down in the description below the comments. And it's the same account as what's in the 5%. So if you want to follow it, it's MT5. Now Darwin, they use this as well. So again, you can link everything together and follow the paths. Now, I only put a tiny wee amount into this um, last week, 150 quid. So if I open this up, it should show you. There you go. The balance is now 166.80. And it's based on one trade a day on two, um, assets, which is Euro, Dollar and Cable. It was originally based on four, but I can't afford to pay for the indices, which was the FTSE and the DAX. And I figured that out this week because when I went to put on a minimum order, it meant my bid size, I could open it because I have the leverage to do it, but it will be over leveraging because it was a pound a point, not 10p a point too much to bear on that account. So the decision was made not to do it and take them off till I build it up. This goes back to, is the money working me or am I working the money? I'm always working the money, you know, because if that goes, well, I've got nothing else. It's a tool, I've got a broken tool. I've got to buy a new tool, you know, because that's what your capital is, it's a tool. So once that's gone, we got that. So that's building up nicely in the background and I'm going to compound that up. Now, if I just sort of flick this over, I'll kind of show you how I'm running it as well. Uh, or at least I will in just a tick. Okay. And I'm going to illustrate something for you. All right. Now I'm, I'm running it with this spreadsheet. Now the reason why I use these spreadsheets is very simple. 
it keeps me on track all the time and I can see what, what's going on. Now it started with 150 and if I go to my summary, it'll tell me, look to for, trade four markets on a breakout target, 25 quid. But then we figured out I can't trade the indices till it hits one pound a pip. All right, so let me show you where that's coming from. So if I come through to here, we can now start seeing that I'm only at 10p and my maximum bid is 17p. Now the MT5 brokerage or platform rather moves up in 0.10 at a point. So I need that to go to 20p and then I can increase. In other words, this needs to get to about 200 quid. Okay. In doing so, at the moment, I've increased the account over the last week by 10%. That's 10.9. Off seven positions. But I'm not going to be singing home about this. Because one of the positions, which is this one here, was a fat finger trade. I wanted to trade the DAX and I figured out that it would only set it at a pound a point. I was savvy enough to realize that I can't take that trade and I didn't, but it remembered the position size. And when I went, went to the Euro, it went in at a pound a point. Now, fortunately, it went in my favor. And I say fortunately, because this was literally a lucky trade all right so it's not a good trade in fact it was a terrible trade it was pure luck that got me that sort of win you know the only good side of it was my analysis was kind of correct didn't hit the stop got pretty close to it and then it ran for me in my direction but by the time i realized what was going on i killed it straight away you know it was in profit killed it Boom, it could have run on a damn sight further, but it could also have turned around and took the equation out. And instead of looking at a 12 pound win, I could have been looking at a 20 or a 30 pound loss. Now on this account, that would be catastrophic. It would take me a long time to build that back up. But this is one of the questions that you ask. Are you chasing the money and getting the money to work for you? Or are you working the money? Simple question. Because people, they are kicking it in to Morningstar. I'm only going to really do one video a week on it. Because they're not interested in pennies. They just want to see the Lambos. You are literally too stupid to insult. You're a dickhead. You genuinely are a dickhead. Jesus Christ, dude. Because it might be good entertainment, but it's not reality. Are you serious? Grow your accounts properly. So this brings me on to what I'm driving at. I'm going to build this up till Christmas. I'm building the other one up constantly. It's just another account I have in the ball. And all I do is I just copy from one account what I'm doing and I put it into there. But I only trade one, one asset a day in that. So it's dead easy to do. So if I'm looking at cable, I'll just have that on the screen as well. And I'll trade cable on my normal account. And then I'll just put a smaller position of cable on that share account. Simple stuff. Um, but what's it all mean? Well, let me show you Vanguard because people are curious of this. Now, this is showing exactly what profits can do for you. All of the money in here is profits from trading. And it's from a small prop that I set up. And it's also from um, the small share accounts. Now the small share account puts 50, 60 quid a month into it, maybe 70 quid. That's it, the prop puts the rest in. But none of this is my own personal money. It's just from accounts that I've set up and I draw in. Now I, do, I also watch what goes on in here. Now a couple of them are not performing very well. Some of them are performing well, but these are long-term investments. They're gonna take five to 10 years. So you just put into them. And at the moment, these are the, the funds that I've chosen. Um, I do have kind of a picker. Give me a second and I'll show you. Well, we're waiting. Okay, guys, so this is my picker. Now what this is, 
I've gone through the last five years of every one of the funds on Vanguard. There was 86, I'll show you them if you want, and worked out whether they were good, bad, or indifferent, and whether they made profit in the last five years. And if so, what's the average profit, what's the total profit, and what's kind of a risk profile against them? And it's thrown out the top 10, which is here. Now I then look at those top 10 and I pick out of them which I think is, well, best for me. Now I might actually only drill that down into three over the coming months because I'm just watching to see what goes on. So I'll always have the S&P 500. Why? Because it's performed solidly for 30 years. You know, I live in the UK, so I'll have some form of FTSE in it. So I'll keep that. Why? Because the American economy is pretty darn good and can't see it slowing down in the future because of the companies it has. Then I want something to balance that portfolio out, which is the life strategy. That's a blended fund. You know, and you'll see that inside of here. You know, so these might turn down into three. So I'll keep this and I'll keep the 500 and then I'll drop it down to maybe one or two more. But at the moment, I'm happy with the funds that I've got. And there was a saying a while ago, it's actually from the founder of Vanguard. Don't look for the needle, buy the haystack. Well, that's what I'm doing. I'm actually flattening out my portfolio. And that way, it'll spread out my risk because that's one thing I want to do. And it'll also grow steadily and compound back into itself. So that's exactly what I'm doing here, you know, because these pay dividends as well as interest. And those dividends get put back into this pot and that pot will grow. So this started sort of this tax year, which is April. So there's three and a half grand's worth of profits now working for me, you know. And if I looked at it, you can kind of see where I got um, my funds from. If we, we open this up, there's 86 funds, okay? Now we can start drilling these down very easily. You can sort of go, well, I only want level four, five, and six. So that'll pull in reasonable bonds and reasonable return accounts. So there's 75 of them, okay? I don't want active managed funds because fund managers, believe it or not, are not as good as what they think they are. So what I'm really after is an index fund where it just tracks the price of it, okay? So that brings it down somewhat. So there you are, you've got 65 funds now. Now, this bit doesn't really matter against accumulation or, or income because I'll just put all the dividends back into it anyway. But then you can just filter it down into whatever you like. So let's just say you don't want a blended market you just flip through it. Or you might like a certain economy. You might like the US economy. So you can go, right, well, I only want to invest in the US. And then suddenly, there you go. You've got five funds to choose from. You can quickly look at them to see how much they cost. Well, there, there's the costs. You go, well, that's 0 0.07, nothing. S&P 500, brilliant. Put it into here. Again, the ongoing charge here is 0 0.1, next to nothing. You got 3,651 holdings in there. Buy the hair stack, not the needle. So you can quickly find what's going on. You can then quickly flick over and see what the past performance is. You know, so this fund here that we're quickly looking at has not lost money really in the last five years. Neither has this one here, you know, the S&P 500, even when it had a colossal thump, it wasn't enough to wipe it out. It had a positive expectancy. Make your money work for you guys. Isn't that logical? So really that's what this is all about, you know? So I'll ask the question again, is the money working you? Or are you working the money? Now for me, trading is a job. That's it. So when I refer to capital as a tool, 
because it is a tool of the job. The difference between sort of prop and various other different things is if I choose to sell that tool, you know, because I don't want to do it anymore, I can. You know, if I'm a builder and I sell my tools, I get a few quid for it. In the trading world, I just draw my money out. And I either put it back into Vanguard where it'll look after itself or I spend it. But in the prop industry, you can only draw your profits out. Something to think about. So if you are looking at this, what do you think you're doing? And I'd be interested in the comments what you say. Is the money working you? And you're gambling and you're chasing it? Or are you working the money and letting it grow and invest to give you something that I think we all want? And that's freedom. Just a thought. So as always, guys, trade well, keep your risk managed. But above all, do what you love and the money will follow. See you all in the next one.